Hi, I'm Manny. Today I'm going to be installing an ox lift. I'm going to show you what you need and how to do it. So if you haven't seen an ox lift before, it's one of these. So originally got this to get rid of my clutter. And then as you can see, I got more clutter. So it's time to install a second one. I'll show you how it's done. Here is a view of all the tools needed. Uh, you're gonna need a drill. I recommend a backup battery, um, some wrenches, measuring tape, tape for marking, pencil, lever, square, uh, screws, Allen keys, uh, some wire cutters, a level is nice, uh, some pliers, and a very long stick. So you can see, I'll show you exactly what this is for later on, but it's basically for this tool to do the calibration on the ox lift so that your motors can calibrate. All right, um, in addition to those tools, you'll also need two ladders, preferably two ladders and a friend. Uh, once you have your tools, uh, the next step is to identify where you wanna put your ox lift and which direction your rafters are going. So I wanna put mine over here, and I've identified that my rafters are going uh, long ways, this way, across the, the garage and not vertical with it. Uh, there's two ways to identify the direction of your rafters. One is to use a uh, stud finder and just follow that, and it'll tell you where the studs are going. Uh, or the, the rafters are going. Second option is to, like I did, climbed up into my attic and visually inspect my rafters. Um, and that's, that's it, I've identified it over here and now it's time to measure. All right, let's get our measuring tape and start measuring. So you need to have a minimum of 24 inches from the wall to the, the, the beginning of the strap. So if you have any obstacles that are gonna interfere with those 24 inches, you have to add those uh, dimensions to it. So for example, I have this little ledge over here. I'm gonna measure it and it's four inches. So instead of measuring 24 inches or 24 inches from the wall, I'm gonna have to uh, measure 28. So don't measure from here, measure from the ceiling. Uh, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that. All right. And this is why I recommend having two ladders and a buddy. So we measured our first measurement over here, 20 inches from the wall. And then from that measurement to here should be 59. So 59 inches in between each strut. When I say that, if you can look and pan over here, you can see the struts over here. So that's why they need to be 20 or 59 inches. So we'll be doing that over here soon. All right, when you order from Oxlift, you'll get three boxes. In one of the boxes, you'll get your struts to hang um, and your motors. In the other box, this long one contains the frame for the platform and this flat one contains the mesh that you put on top of the platform. Uh, but first, we gotta install the struts. So with the struts, you get two, and one is very important. One is gonna have these holes. This is where, this is gonna be the one that you want closest to your outlet. This is where the cables will go, and this is where the control box is gonna go. If you can see, the other strut is solid, doesn't have those holes. They both have these holes, these holes are for drilling. So um, those other holes are the important ones. In those boxes, you're also gonna get this box of goodies. Uh, this is where you get all your um, fasteners and your control box and your power cord. Come over here, I'll show you these. These are the screws that we're gonna use for the struts. So I'll show you how that's done. All right, we're getting ready to start to drill. So what have we done so far? We've measured and marked where we want our holes. Uh, next step is to mark where we want 
the hole. So we gotta identify the center of the rafter. I highly recommend using a good stud finder. Um, just start by going out. If you haven't used one, um, it'll leave you, it'll make no noises. It'll be silent when there is no uh, uh, rafter or stud. And then it starts telling me that, hey, I'm by the edge. And it starts beeping at me once I'm at the center. So mark it right here. And that's where my first hole is gonna go. So I'm gonna do this for this rafter over here and this one behind me. And then I'll start drilling with a 1 8 drill bit. All right, and I'll show you what that's like later. All right, so we measured 28 inches because of the 24 inch requirements, plus the four inch gap of that ledge down at the bottom. And from those holes, we, uh, or from those markings, uh, use a stud finder to get the center. From that center marking, measured 59 inches, use a stud finder to find the center of the rafter. And now it's time to start drilling. So you gotta use your 1 8 drill bit and start drilling. And then I'll show you what's next. Okay, now it's time to put the strut on. This is the side where my control box is gonna go. So I wanna make sure that these holes are pointing towards the wall. These other holes over here are for the wires, the motor wires that are gonna run through and come out through these holes for the controller. Shake it, try to shake it on that end. Good, perfect. Fantastic, high five. All right, so we got our struts installed and now it's time to repair the motors for install. A couple things I wanna point out. You will get two of these in your box, one with a green tag and one with a red tag. I'll explain that in detail later, but just for now, it just it's gonna dictate on which side the motors go. You're also going to notice a side with a wire coming up and a side with just a bare uh, movable metal piece. Uh, for this step, you're going to need your L struts. Uh, you'll notice that there's a oval end, oval end and a square end and you're going to need cotter pins. Um, for this cable one, you want to install the square end and the circ with the circle end facing up. So square end goes in, circle up. Like that. Then you put the cotter pin in, spread it open. Then we'll prep the struts and we'll be screwing this end into the struts. And I'll show you what that's like. You might have noticed these uh, weird looking things in your box. This is what's actually going to connect your motor to your strut. So I like to unscrew them and place this end in the strut while I screw the motor in. So if you look at this, this is the way it's going to look. Screw goes in. Imagine this being on the strut and it screws in that way and it stays um, on your strut that way. So I'm going to show you how to space this piece on your struts. So follow me. So for this part, you're gonna need that funky looking piece 
and your instruction manual. So I have a 600 pound lift that I'm installing. The 400 pound lift has a different um, length requirements. But for me, these two motors should have a distance of 51 inches, uh, 51 and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna measure that and put these 51 and three quarters apart. So watch me. So this piece has a spring, which is uh, a little weird to put in, but I just put it with uh, um, the metal piece going parallel with the uh, strut, so it slides in very easily. Once I'm in, I will rotate it to where it's perpendicular, and it's in. So now I have to measure from this piece to the end to be around four and a quarter, four and a half, for it to meet the 51 and three quarters distance between the other motor. So I'm gonna go place uh, those other pieces in and I'll show you uh, how I measure it. So I got two of those nuts with springs um, in the struts. So now I have to measure them and make sure that they're 51 inches and three quarters apart. So in two ladders, two motors, we're ready to install these up to the ceiling. So before we start, I told you that I'm gonna tell you what the red tags and the green tags meant. So I want you to imagine that you have your control box on this side facing the wall. I want your back to face the wall and the red motor should be on the right side of you and the green on the left. When you install these, you want the cable side towards the wall with the cable facing up and the L bracket facing up as well. What we're gonna do is we're gonna carry these together up. We're gonna take our screws. As we carry it up, put this in there and screw it. So I'll show you how that's done right now. Once you have it hand, hand tight, there's a couple things you should be aware of. Make sure that the cable is falling inward and not outward. Your cable, you can put through one of the holes in the strut. And let it dangle for now. So. Now we're gonna go do the second one. All right, so we're getting ready to install the second motor. Um, just one thing I wanted to point out, the reason we have the cable pointing up is because there are some controls here at the bottom. Come a little closer. This is how we adjust the motor's length. So the motors, once they're installed, we adjust them to a bottom level and a ceiling level where they won't go above that. So these are the tools that we use. So you wanna make sure that these are, again, pulling down and the cable's pointing up. So let's go ahead and install this one. Again, hand tight is enough. We'll tighten them later. Um, things again to double check and zoom in for this one because I, I don't think you were able to see it on the last one, but you want the cable falling, <laughs> you want the cable falling in and not out on this end. And once you got both of them up, now it's time to construct the platform and uh, then we've got the adjustments and then we're done. Very exciting. Oh, 
And uh, the cable box. You gotta get some little electrical work. I'll show you how that's done too. All right, so in this box is your control box. It's gonna look like this. Maybe you have a different color one. Um, you'll notice that there's something sticking out. You'll also have a power cord with some colored uh, cables coming out. So what do we wanna do? We wanna pop it open just by pulling gently. You'll see the inside. You'll notice you have a remote. This is a, a newer one. I haven't seen this one before. And some screws. These screws are used to drill it on the top. So you'll be using these holes over here to drill it on top. Um, you notice that there's a one and two button. And you'll notice that there's also these things. This is where the cables will connect. Let me grab that thing. Oh. You'll notice this other bag. These little pieces connect to, to these, like that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna follow our manual that tells us which colors go in which pieces and connect in which direction. For the most part, you'll notice that these have little grooves on them and you'll notice little grooves out here as well. So these are always gonna be connected facing in like that. So I'm gonna go install this into the ceiling, just regular screws and uh, anchors. Um, and then I'll show you the wiring process. All right. Okay, so we got the motor screwed in. It was just some um, screws with some anchors. If it was in drywall, these were in a stud, so they didn't need any anchors for that. But once we're in, we wanna make sure that we're aligned with the holes that were on the strut. We are gonna pass the cables from the motors through here, through these holes. This other motor is gonna go not through this one and not through that one, but this middle one. And then the power cord is gonna come through here and then in through this one. And then we're gonna start wiring the, the, the wires. Once you have everything connected and plugged into power, you can turn power on with that switch and this light will turn green if everything was done properly. So let's see how, how we did. You can see that light turned green, means everything is working just fine. So we'll continue with the rest and, uh, and I'll show you uh, how to finish it, how to wrap it up. All right, so we got the struts on, the motors on, the control box powered on. Now it's time to get working on the platform. The platform is extremely easy. Think Ikea. You need, you get a bag of 12 nuts, 12 screws. You need a 10 millimeter wrench and a 3 thirteenths Allen wrench. You will see that at the ends, there's these corner pieces and this flat piece that doesn't bend like these do. These flat pieces go at the end and get um, screwed on to the long pieces as such. So very simple. Then these in the middle, you'll identify them because they have this bend and they're gonna be going to the two vertical holes. Uh, it's very easy, very simple. Follow the instructions and uh, you'll get it done shortly. Thank you. All right, so we got the platform frame completed. Very easy, just like an Ikea piece of furniture. And the next step is to get these cables that run down the motor mounted to the platform. We're gonna be using these items, these little, um, they're gonna be the legs, and this is where the cable's gonna go through. These holes is where the screws go to hold it onto the, uh, the cable. And then you'll notice there's these two little things. These things are to tighten up on the rope. So once you got it set, 
uh, that the rope doesn't move. So we gotta use a 3 16 Allen wrench to loosen it up so that we can play around with the rope as we adjust it. So um, let me show you what that looks like. Next step is to identify the angle of the rope or of this groove where the rope's gonna go in and put it on. So you might need some help. You might need someone to help you lift it up. Uh, we are going to put the rope in like such and then get it into these holes with a little bit of help. And then we get the nuts in, but not tight because we have to do some adjustments here. As you can see, if you could back up a bit, that this is uh, definitely not um, even. So it looks like there's more rope on this end than there is on that end. So we're gonna feed in the rope on this end while we pull on the rope on that end. So just feeling that we kind of slowly get something that is semi-level. We will work on the leveling process later. Well, you can see that's, that's not as ridiculous as it was before. So we're gonna go ahead and put the other side on and then I'll show you how we level it. All right, so we got the legs in and the cable's mounted to the platform. But as you can see, it's wanky, it's not even. So we busted out the level. And we're gonna get this going. So you can see this side is a little lower than that end. So that means we gotta feed in rope. Take it out of here and feed in and pull in through this side. So we kind of keep doing that until we're able to find a sweet side or a sweet spot. As you can see, I did this a little too much. So we're gonna do the opposite and I'm gonna feed just a little. We're starting to get level. That's just about it. Can you zoom into the level and then maybe show the, the watchers? So it is pretty level and I think the other end needs some work. So we're gonna go ahead and go that over there and fix it. All right, once your platform is leveled, it's time to add the mounting brackets like over here and on the other sides and tighten all the bolts. So this mountain bracket is pretty simple. You remove the nuts until the U-ring separates from this piece. This piece goes underneath the cable and the U-ring goes over into two holes. And then you just add a washer and a nut. And that's it. And then you tighten all everything else and we will be ready for adjusting, adjusting the motors. All right, so we got the platform leveled, connected to the motors, and we got the control box plugged in and ready to go. So now we gotta learn about the remote. So you're either gonna get one of two remotes, this newer version or this uh, version that I'm more familiar with. Uh, if you get this version, one is up, uh, three is down, and two is stop. In this version, up is up, down is down, and center is stop. So we got everything installed, but we got to do what we call an adjustment. So the way these work is that they are designed to go to uh, an altitude or, or a level where you want to. So if you look at this other one that I have installed over here, um, I wanted it to be to stop at the height of two of these boxes, which I believe was around uh, four feet. So I got four feet where the machine stops on its own and, uh, and it stops when it goes to the bottom. So now I have to adjust this one. So off the box, 
you can start messing with it and press it down and it'll keep going until it's done and that's where you have to start your adjustment I want to start with a ceiling adjustment so I'm gonna stop it and I'm gonna let it go up all the way until it stops and what you're looking for is those lights to stay green or to stay white and you want to pay attention to where it's stopping so it stopped right here those lights are white we go into the inside adjustment hole with our tool that's in the box and a super long stick and we turn right oh i turned the wrong way we turn right and it starts moving and this starts the adjustment so I'm going to keep going until I get it as high as I want. And then I'm going to go to the other side and do the same. So remember, inside adjustment hole on the motor, turning right. So I think that's enough on this side. I'm going to go to the other side. And I can only do this while those LED lights are on white. So again, inside hole, turn right, and they start adjusting. And we just keep going until we get to the altitude for the, the height that we want. So, as you can see, LEDs timed out on me. So, it happens pretty frequently. So, what you do is simple. You get your remote again, and you make it go down for a little bit, stop, go up, and let it go all the way until it stops on its own. And then we go back to the adjustments inside hole oh and turn right and we keep going and we keep this process until we get to our desired height all right and in some cases if you were to wait um, let's say you got your white LEDs on and you're searching for your tool or you're tying it up, um, that might time out and you're gonna have to do the same thing where you press down, stop, and go back up. For the floor adjustment, it's very similar. Instead of letting uh, the lift go all the way to the top, we let it go all the way down to the bottom and we use the outside holes for the adjustments. And I'll show you just how, how that works in a minute once I get the ceiling, ceiling adjustment done. All right, so we got our ceiling adjustment done. This is the exact height that I wanted. So now the next step is to do the floor adjustment. So similar like the ceiling, we let it go all the way down until it stops on its own. It's not gonna be holding. like the far side is already where I want it so I only have to adjust this side so now I go to the motor I want to adjust the outside adjustment hole put the tool in there and start turning right and as you can see if you can show down here it is turning it down so now I get a pick where I want it I think one more might do the trick. Um, I think one more. Perfect. So most, some of you might have the same issue. So my garage is slightly tilted. You have to let water run out so it doesn't build up. So 
I'm going to have this slot side slightly lower than that. And you can see it's still kind of floating a bit, not touching the ground. And that's on purpose because once I put the grates on here and I put my, my storage items on here, it's going to cause tension on these lines and it's going to cause the, the platform to touch the ground. So this swaying won't be an issue then. So that is the adjustment. Um, not too difficult. Um, so we'll start putting on the grates and uh, show you what the final product looks like. Okay, once you have your settings, your motor settings adjusted, you want to turn number two on the on position. Now what that does, it, it requires you to press the down arrow for it to move as soon as you lift your finger from the down arrow, it'll stop. And that's a safety reason because if someone accidentally presses the down arrow and your car is down there, it uh, won't stop unless someone hits the stop button. So let's turn number two on. And that's what it should look like. Then you can put the cover on and you don't have to look at this anymore. All right. We uh, installed our struts, installed our motors, adjusted our motors, got our platform set up. So the last thing to do, the final thing to wrap it up, is to put on the grates, crates. Um, and we use these clips to hold them on. So you can see there is a hook end and a flat end. We slide it into the metal and then press down. So very easy, like that. Then those grates will um, form in there and hold in place. And that's it. I'll show you the final product. So this is how the grates connect. As you can see, that plastic piece is what's holding them all together. And at this point, you can celebrate because your job is now done. Well, not really. Now you gotta start putting stuff on there and organizing your garage. But that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video.